what's up youtube this is my first video um about like giving the gospel um or giving something about the gospel with you know kind of my twist on therapy i don't know if i'm gonna edit this i don't even know if i'm gonna post this um but i'm being obedient i, I feel led to share this message with you with you guys um this is something that i've been reading that's kind of been uh shaping my mind and my thought process um as i go through this and so um what I'm reading currently is 2 Samuel 13. And this, guys, this story is crazy. It's so messy. Um, it is it's so messy. But God uses mess for his messages. And he uses messy messengers for his messages. Um, so, yeah. And so uh, I think we, we, we should just dive straight in, straight into it. Uh, I really don't don't want to read the full full chapter to you guys. But this is 2 Samuel 13. Um, this is the story about Tamar and uh, Amnon. So, and we'll just, we'll go verse by verse and then I'll, I'll try to be quick and I'll try to, you know, recap as fast as I can. So here we go. Now, David's son Absalom had a beautiful sister named Tamar and Amnon, her half brother, fell desperately in love with her. Amnon became so obsessed with Tamar that he became ill. She was a virgin and Amnon thought he could never have her. So let's stop right there. Guys, we were talking about emotional sobriety. So this is a perfect example example of emotional intoxication. Amnon is so desperately in love or in lust with his half sister that he makes himself physically ill. What happens when you drink too much? You make yourself physically ill and you can't think straight. Amnon cannot think straight because he's so emotionally intoxicated with lust. Let's continue. All right. But Amnon had a very crafty friend, his cousin Jonadab. He was the son of David's brother Shemia. One day Jonadab said to Amnon, what's the trouble? Why should the son of a king look so dejected morning after morning? Guys, make no mistake. Jonadab is the picture of the devil, and he asks a very eerily similar question um, to what the serpent asked Eve in the garden. And not only that, Jonadab is listed, listed as being a crafty friend. The serpent, serpent back in Genesis 3, go look it up in the NLT or the ESV, it says the serpent was the craftiest of all the creatures created. So there's just two parallels that we see here. And so Amnon is being crafted and shaped um, to have these thoughts by the by the serpent, you know, Jonadab, who to me is the picture of Satan. Um, so I just I don't I don't want to zoom past that too fast. I want you all to be able to recognize the devil when you see him and his tactics, because his tactics are to get you to have enough rope just to hang yourself. He doesn't want to do it himself. He wants you to mess yourself up. So he he'll he'll plant an idea. He'll plant a seed in your head on on what to do so that you act on it. He'll play on your emotions, especially when you're in a state of being emotionally intoxicated. He'll grab you up right then and there and he'll trip you up. You think your thinking is wrong. Your thinking is stinking, as some people might say. All right, let's continue. Let's move on. So Amnon told him, I am in love with Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Well, Jonah, Jonah Dab said, I'll tell you what, what to do. Go back to bed. And pretend you are ill. When your father comes to see you, ask him to let Tamar come and prepare some food for you. Tell him you feel better if she prepares it as you watch and, and watch and feed you with her own hands. Now, see, this is where it is. Here's his friend, Jonah, his friend, Jonadab, telling him exactly what to do. He's feeding him the same way the serpent fed, fed the lies to Eve. He, he asked her, it's like, why? Why can't you eat of the fruit fruit of the tree of good and evil and of, of knowledge? You won't die. All you got to do is take a bite. Essentially, this is the same thing. He's like, Jonadab is saying, why should the king be in mourning day after day? All you got to do is set it up, pretend like you're sick, and then have her come on to your room. And then when everybody leaves, do the thing you do, you know, make, make it cool. And so, like I said, Jonadab is not a friend. A friend, by the way, 
A friend would never encourage you to sin. And if they do encourage you to sin, you need to remove yourself from them immediately. Your friends are not your friends if they're encouraging you to to do something that is sinful, that is against the nature and the will of God. So you need to surround yourself with the right friend group so that you don't make the same mistake that Amnon did. And boy, did he make a mistake. So Amnon lay down and pretended to be sick. And when the king, king came to see him, came to see him, Amnon asked him, please let my sister Tamar come and cook my favorite dish. As I watch, then I then I can eat from her own hands. So David agreed and sent Tamar to Amnon's house to prepare some food for him. When Tamar arrived at Amnon's house, she she went to the place where, where he was lying down so he could watch her mix some dough. Then she baked his favorite dish for him. But when she set the servant and servant tray before him, he refused to eat. Everyone get out of here, Amnon told his servants. So they left. Which, by the way, back in the day was actually against the law. A woman was not to be alone by herself with a man in a room. But here we are. Then he said to her, said to Tamar, now bring the food into my bedroom and feed it to me here. So Tamar took his favorite dish to him. But as she was feeding him, he grabbed her and demanded, come to bed with me, my darling sister. I don't know if he said it like that, but that's the way I'm going to pretend like that's the way it sounds in my head. Right. Like come lay in bed with me, my darling sister. I don't know why he sounds like Count Dracula or something. Um, so no, my brother, she cried. Don't be foolish. Don't do this to me. Such wicked things aren't done in Israel. Where could I go in my shame? And you would you would be and you would be called one of the greatest fools in Israel. Please just speak to the king about it and he will let you marry me. He could have married her. He could have had her the right way. Even though it's weird, like you gonna marry your your, your cousin, your, your, I don't know what. But your your half sister, you gonna marry her? Like, bro, stop being weird. Um but this is this is what emotional intoxication does. He's so high on horny um, that he can't think straight. So we'll we'll continue on. Let's see what happens. But Amnon wouldn't listen to her, and since he was stronger than she was, he raped her. Then suddenly Amnon's love turned to hate, and he hated her even more than he had loved her. Get out of here! He snarled at her. No, no! Cried Tamar. Sending me away now is worse than what you've already done to me. Now, let's st- stick a pin in that. So what we find out about sin is when it's sin in this form and you finally get what you're lusting after and we realize it's not fulfilling, especially after you've done something so wrong, you become disgusted with the object. But the thing is, you're not disgusted with the thing. You're not disgusted with the person or whatever the situation is. You're actually disgusted with yourself. Amnon was so disgusted with himself that he imposed that onto Tamar and he put her away. He was so disgusted with the actions that he had just done that he hated her for them. And it wasn't her fault. She didn't do anything. She did exactly what she was supposed to do or what she thought she was supposed to do. And he grabbed her and he raped her. And then he became furious after that because he was furious with himself. He wasn't right with himself. But Amnon wouldn't listen to her. Listen to her. He shouted for his servants and, dem- and demanded, throw this woman out <clears throat> and, lock, and lock the door behind her. So the servant put her out and locked the door behind her. She was wearing a long, beautiful robe, as was the custom in those days for the kings and and the virgins. But now Tamar tore the robe and put ashes on her head. And then with her face in her hands, she went away crying. Her brother Absalom saw her and asked, is it true that Amnon has been with you? Well, my sister, my sister, keep quiet for now since he's your brother. Don't worry about it. So Tamar lived as a desolate woman in her brother Absalom's house. When King David heard what had happened, he was very angry. And though Absalom was, was, and though Absalom never spoke to Amnon about this, he hated Amnon deeply because of what he had done to his sister. And so we go on to find out that Absalom actually sets up this crafty dinner to actually murder um, Amnon for what he had done to to Tamar. Um, But guys, I just wanted to stick a pen in it right there and kind of zoom in. Guys, this is what emotional intoxication does. When you're so 
emotionally intoxicated, you do stupid stuff, you do foul stuff. Um, and then sometimes you you change the course of your life off of something you did when you were intoxicated. Um, off of something you could have avoided, <clears throat> you change your entire life. And so I wanted to talk about that. But guys, we know the scriptures tell, tells us to be sober minded. First Peter 5, 8 says to be sober minded because the enemy, the devil, devil is walking around like a lion seeking whom he may devour. And we see just that with this passage. Guys, a lot of times in times in life, we are so emotionally intoxicated that all it takes is one one little video for the devil to to pop up on your timeline. And then you make the wrong move with somebody. Let's say you slide into their DMs or they slide into yours or and then you got your quote unquote friends encouraging you to to girl it ain't gonna be that bad or boy go ahead and do that bro you go to like whatever it is and then before you know it you've destroyed yourself you've destroyed your relationship maybe you've destroyed your marriage all off off of something you did when you were emotionally intoxicated guys it is so crucial that you be sober minded and so how can we remain sober minded first you need to be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so when you find yourself being emotionally stirred up you got to catch it early catch it early recognize when you're being stirred up in the wrong direction because if you let it grow into the intoxication phase then you're going to make stupid decisions and let's not get it twisted emotions are good but not all of not overwhelming intoxicating emotions we want to have emotions in moderation now, I'll say that again. Emotions and moderation. Guys, you don't want to get too emotionally intoxicated to the point where you make bad decisions and then you change the course of your life forever. Amnon did just this. He was so emotionally intoxicated that he made a bad decision. He hurt somebody else, which then in return caused him to be hurt. We see that Absalom later comes back and he murders Amnon. As he should, in my opinion. I mean, I mean, as he should because he, he raped his sister and so he got what he what he deserved honestly and that's that i believe that that's what god had for him um was that revenge because he shouldn't have been emotionally intoxicated sleeping with his half sister and it just is what it is now the larger part of this is that god is also making good on a curse that he gave to david because david had sinned before because he slept with Bathsheba and then murdered Uriah, God told him that he wouldn't kill David, but that he actually would cause turmoil in his house and that his firstborn son would die. So that's exactly what happened. Bathsheba gave birth to a baby boy, the firstborn from that first time when he slept with her. Um, he died, but she did give birth to another son who did become uh, become great. Um and then he followed through with the turmoil in his house. This is the perfect example of turmoil in his house. Amnon wanting to sleep with his half sister and then Absalom retaliating, killing Amnon. Like this is this is a lot of hoopla. And now we got poor Tamar who is now traumatized for the rest of her life. We see that the scriptures, we see that she lives as a desolate woman. This means she was depressed and isolated for the rest of her life. Guys, it's such a, a big and heavy topic but we know that there is hope and we can catch our emotions early we can self-regulate we can redirect our thoughts to be on the things of god so that we can be transformed by the renewing of our minds guys that's that's it catch your emotions early self-regulate and be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that when the enemy the devil comes seeking to devour you you can strike back